In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with ASP.NET Core Identity. I'll show you how to create and customize the Identity Database Context, how to customize the Identity User, create all of the Identity Database Tables, and finally, register a user using the Identity Abstractions. We have a lot of topics to cover, so let's jump into the video. Let's start with the quick intro into what I currently have. I'm orchestrating this application using .NET Aspire, and I'm doing this because I want to run a Postgres instance, and inside of it I have a respective user's database. I'm going to use this database inside of my user management API, and this is all I have in the web application. So we are starting basically from scratch. So we have to start by installing a couple of NuGet packages. Because I'm going to be using Postgres, I will need a respective provider, so I'm going to install mpg SQL NAD Framework Core Postgres. I'll install Microsoft NAD Framework Core Tools. This will allow me to create migrations from the console, and I'm also going to install Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity NAD Framework Core. This contains the identity abstractions for working with EF Core. So with these libraries in place, let's go back to our code, and the next thing we need is a database context. So in the user management API, I will create a new folder let's call this data and inside of this folder let's add our database context i'm going to call this the application database context and here we want to implement the identity db context which is an abstraction that contains all of the identity tables now i'm going to use the generic variant because it allows me to specify a custom instance for my application user. So let's create that class. I'll call this the application user. And here I want to inherit from the identity user type. So this already contains some base properties like the username, the email, and a bunch of other stuff. You can see all of the things inside. And why I'm doing this, because I want to specify some custom fields when registering this user. So let's say we have a flag called enable notification notifications and if this is set to true we're going to send some notifications to this user and another thing is some initials that we can also set while registering this user and I want to be able to use these custom fields from my user so I'm going to specify this in the identity DB context and then I'll show you how we can customize this so let's define a constructor here first so I'm going to pass in the DB context options of application database context and I want to pass this along to the base class construct then I want to override the on model creating method make sure to keep the base call to on model creating because this is what actually configures the identity types. Let me show you what's inside. So I'll navigate to on model creating and let's say on model creating version two. And you can see the EF core configuration for the ASP.NET users and all of the other tables. I'm going to show you what these tables are when we run the database migration. So I'll keep that. Then I want to configure my application user. And you can see I'm getting a completion here, which I like. And it's setting the default value for enable notifications to true. Let's say we want this unless the user explicitly opts out of notifications. And we're also setting a max length for the user's initials to five. So this is some sensible defaults. Now I also want to configure another thing and this is the schema, and I'm going to provide the value of identity. So I want all of the tables in this database context to have a custom schema. Let me move the application user to its own type. And then a couple of other things we have to configure are related to the application services. So because this is a database context, we have to configure it like any other DB context. We just say add DB context, provide the database context name, and then we can configure the database context options. And here I'm going to say use MPG SQL, and I need to specify the connection string so i'll say builder configuration get connection string and the connection string name is users db if you're wondering where this is coming from i have this defined in my app host so when i added the postgres resource i also created a database called users db i saved that in a variable and i referenced this from my user management api so now i have this as a connection string so that's why this is just going to work when i run this using aspire now that takes care of the database context but what about identity well here we also have to do a few more things so i have to say add identity and here I need to specify the application user because I'm using a custom user type and I also have to provide the role type. I'll use the default one called identity role. Now I can also add any the framework stores and I just need to pass in my application database context because it already implements the identity DB context, which is required by ASP.NET Core identity. So that's the setup I need. Now in this video, I don't want to deal with authentication and authorization. I just want to set up my database tables and be able to register 
register a new user within the system. So that's the goal for the video. So next thing is creating a migration. I'll set the startup project to the user management API. I'll say add migration, create database and I'll target the user management API project. So let's run this. This will hopefully complete successfully, and we're going to get a new database migration that we can run to create the necessary tables. So here's the migration. You can see we have the identity schema, all of the respective tables like ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET users, and inside of the users, note that we have our two custom columns, the enable notifications and the user's initials. By default, these will not be part of the ASP.NET users table, but because we customize the identity user, then we can include them. And this is how you can customize any other table in ASP.NET Core identity according to your requirements. So then we have all of the other tables. I'm just going to skip over this. Now, next thing is running this when we start the application. So I'm going to create a service scope if I'm in the development environment, I'll say app services create scope. Then I'm going to resolve the database context. Of course, I need to remember to dispose of the scope. So I'm going to say using, and then I can access scope service provider, get required service and resolve the application database context. Finally, this allows me to call database migrate and apply any database migrations. What's something else we can take care of in this step? So let's say I also want to have some custom roles for my user. So so let's create a class called roles. I'll make it a static class. And inside, I'm just going to define a couple of contents. So one is going to be the admin, and the other one is going to be, let's say, the member role. And when we register a user, we want to place them in the member role. So we could insert these values using the database context. We can access the roles as a DB set. Note that we also have access to users, and this is a DB set of the application user. So this is respecting our customer custom identity user type. Now I'm going to show you a slightly different approach. What we can do is resolve the role manager. You will see that ASP.NET Core Identity has a bunch of supporting services like the user manager that we'll use to register a new user. And in this case, I'll use the role manager to check if a role exists with a given name. And if it does not, then I can create it. So here's the example for the admin role. Let's do the same for the member. And I'm only going to run this at startup and when I'm in the development environment. I won't bother moving this into some helper functions, although you probably want to do this instead of polluting your program file. Nonetheless, let's run this. I should now start my user management API, my database, create the database, apply the migrations, and also see the admin and member roles. So let's see if this is actually the case. I'm in the Aspire app host. You can see my services are up and running. Here is my Postgres database, the respective users database inside, and we have our user management API. If I go into the console and take a look at the user management API, you can see our migrations being applied, creating the respective tables and so on. And if I jump into some database viewer, like in this case, the Beaver, I can connect to my database and observe the identity schema. So here are all of the tables that I have inside. So I can slightly re rearrange them so that it's easier to see all of the tables. And essentially, we are most interested in ASP.NET users. This is what contains our actual application users. But you can see that ASP.NET Core Identity supports a lot of additional things. For example, we have user roles to implement role-based authorization. We can also attach additional claims to the roles to implement something like role-based access control where roles can have permissions. We also have user claims where we could possibly add custom permissions to specific users. Then we have access for external authentication providers. We can also add external authentication providers and create some custom tokens for the user. Now, I want to take a look at the ASP.NET roles table. Let's look at the data and you can see our two roles do exist. We have the admin and the member role and we see that these values when we started the application. So we have our building blocks in place. The database is ready. The database context is ready. We have a custom application user. Now, let me show you what we need to do to register a new user using ASP.NET Core Identity. So let me, for example, create some folder called features and inside of it, I'll add a new class and I'm going to call this register user. So let's make this, for example, static. I'll create a record inside called request and this will represent my request object. So what do I need to specify? I need an email. I need the user's initials. I need the user's password. And let's say we also support the enable notifications field. By default, it's going to be false. For the business logic, I'm just going to expose a static method. Let's make it void. And I'm going to call this map endpoint. 
and here I need an I endpoint route builder. Let's call this app. And what I want to do here is expose a post endpoint. Let's call it register. And in the request delegate, I'll implement the logic that's required to register a new user. So we have to accept our request object. This is what we'll use to create the user's data. And to interact with identity, I'll use a user manager. I have to specify my user type. So I'll say application user, and let's call this the user manager. I need to import the using statement. So the user manager is how you can interact with ASP.NET Core identity users. And it has a method called create async, where I can pass in a new application user and their password and create a user. So I don't have a user. We're going to create this and we can pass in the password from the request. Obviously, you would want to do some input validation and check the password strength. For now, let's create the application user. I'll set the email as both the username and the email. I'll pass in the user's initials and the enable notifications value. Because this is async, we're going to call await and this returns an identity result. So let me fully specify the type and we can use the identity result to check if this is successful or not. So now I can say if identity result succeeded or rather if it did not succeed, then I can say return results bad request and let's just return the errors you will typically get a failure if you try to register a user with a username that already exists so after this step we have successfully created our user now i can add the user to the role also using the user manager and for this i need to call the add to role async method i can specify my application user the role name now this assumes that the role already exists in the database if it doesn't you're going to get a failure now this also returns a result so i'm going to call this add to role result it's also an identity result same as above and we can do the same thing check if the result is successful or not and if it's not successful we'll return the respective errors so now we are creating a user adding it to the role and let's say i'm happy with this i'll just return results okay to be able to see what we did let's return the user as well although you typically don't want to do this because it's leaking sensitive info now because i'm doing this as a demo i can do whatever i want so let's map this endpoint here i'll say register user map endpoint and pass in the application instance so now my endpoint is going to be exposed and we can test this out when we start the application so let's start this and i'll jump into postman i'll send a post request to our endpoint and here's my request body i have an email some initials the password and I won't specify enable notifications. So I place a breakpoint and now if I send this request, I should hit the breakpoint and we can try to create the user. So we get back an identity result and you can see that we failed with four errors. So let's press continue and let's take a look in Postman what the errors are. They are related to the password validation. You can see it's too short. We need a non-alphanumeric, we need a lowercase and uppercase letter. So let's try something like test one, two, three and an exclamation mark and send another request. And this time I should be able to create a user. You can see I managed to do that. I should be able to add the user to the role. This also succeeds. And if I press continue, we will get the user back in Postman. So here's what identity creates when you register a new user. You can see the data inside. Let's also jump into the database where I can take a look at the ASP.NET users table. You can see the user info is inside. And if I also check out ASP.NET user roles, you can see our user and the respective role now have our relationship defined so everything checks out but i also want you to take a look at this distributed trace i'll go into traces take a look at this trace for registering a user and take a look at this all of these are database requests that identity is sending to postgres you can see a select statement an insert into asp.net users then we have another select statement another select statement another select statement another select statement and finally there should be another insert into ASP.NET user roles. So we have a bunch of database requests but these aren't part of the same database transaction. Because this is using EF Core under the hood, each call to save changes async is basically a small transaction, which means we could run into an inconsistent state. So how do we fix this? The user manager is implicitly going to use the same database context as the one I'm going to inject here. So I'll just inject the database context, the application database context, I mean. And the idea behind this is I can access the database facade and begin a new database transaction. So 
I'll say begin transaction async. Let's wrap this in a using statement. So I'll say var transaction. And now we have our transaction. And what this allows me to do is call transaction commit async once I'm done with all of the identity stuff. The problem I'm trying to prevent is creating a user complete successfully, but adding the user to the role fails. And we're not going to successfully roll back because these are separate transactions. However, if I explicitly wrap them in a transaction because I'm creating one on the same database context instance, then this is going to work. So let me show you this with a quick demo. I'll send another request from Postman with a different email and I have my breakpoint set here. So we are opening a transaction, adding a user, adding the users to the role, and I'm going to stop on the commit. Now I'll jump into the database and if I refresh the ASP.NET users table, you can see there's just one user inside. If I refresh ASP.NET user roles, there is just one row inside the one we created earlier. Now back in the application, I'm going to commit the transaction and let's jump back to the database. And if I refresh ASP.NET users, now we have my new user inside as well as the user role. So our transaction did its job correctly and we are safe to complete our API endpoint. So I'll press continue here. We get the user back in Postman and we've implemented the user registration, which is also atomic, meaning we are either going to register the user successfully and all of the values will be stored in the database or nothing at all is going to be stored and we run into some sort of problem. So you can see how identity really simplifies this. With the user manager and a couple of function calls, I'm able to register a new user inside of my system. The next step, which I'm going to cover in a future video, would be generating an access token that we can use to authenticate with the API. Now, if you want to grab the source code for this video, you can do that by joining my community. It's going to be one of the first links in the description right below this video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos about ASP.NET Core identity. If you're looking for a really beginner friendly video then I recommend checking out this one next where I cover how to set up the identity endpoints and also integrate authentication and authorization. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so this video is recommended to more developers. Check out my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills and until next time stay awesome.